Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a little look at some demographic factors affecting aggregate supply in the UK economy. So population growth is clearly important, both the size of the population, the age structure, and also crucially, the, the quality of the labour force, as well as the rate of participation. Our focus in this short session is going to be on population growth in recent years. Now, population growth is a key part of long run aggregate supply which in turn essentially represents the productive capabilities and the capacity and the potential of an economic system. So long and aggregate supply is driven by high productivity. It's driven by a growing population and increased participation of that population. It comes from the gains, the dynamic gains of innovation and enterprise. And uh, long and aggregate supply is also increased when there's a significant increase in, in net capital investment. So population is an important aspect of long run aggregate supply for any country, particularly for developed countries such as the UK, where actually the rate of population growth until recently has been fairly slow. There are two main key drivers of population growth. One is natural population growth, and that's determined, of course, by the birth rate minus the death rate. Here's the chart for the UK from 1991 through to 2014. And you can see following the red line, there's been a trend decline in the death rate from about uh, 640,000 per year to about 580,000. Much of that is a significant decline in male mortality associated with improved health outcomes, uh, less cancer, less heart disease, for example, and a fall in the amount of smoking. The birth rate in the UK since 2001 has uh, increased quite significantly. And of course, that is going to have a, an impact on the labour supply in the years to come. It's already having quite a significant effect on the number of children coming into primary and then secondary school education. So the rate of natural population growth in the UK in 2014 was just over 200,000 people, a little below 2011, but still significant. Now, the second type of growth, of course, comes from net inward migration, in this case, into the UK economy. So the blue line shows the level, annual level of, of immigration coming in, uh, over 600,000 in 2014. The red line shows the number of people emigrating. Keep in mind, you have two flows, you have immigration and emigration. So in 2014, we had over 600,000 people coming in, over 300,000 people leaving. The net figure, of course, was a record high of just over 300,000 people, or about 6,000 people a week. So you can see that the population in the UK is growing quite rapidly at the moment. The natural rate of population growth is edged up in the last 10, 15 years. And of course, we've seen the effect of, of inward migration. What I've done here is I've put all the stuff, all that data on one chart for you. So uh, the blue line is the birth rate minus the death rate. The red line is net international migration. If it's positive, people coming in. And the green line is the overall net change, which sums those together. So we're talking uh, in the UK about a population growth of around 400 to 500,000 people a year in every year, pretty much since 2005. So over a 10 year period, we're talking about an increase of four and a half to five million in the resident UK population. By the way, this data is mid year. So this will be the middle of 2014, the last data point. Now, population size is important. So too is the rate of participation in the labour market. If you get a question on supply side policies, one of the aims of policies is to try and encourage an increase in labour force participation. Different ways of measuring this. This data comes from the uh, United Nations Human Development Report and looks at uh, 2013 information, the percentage of people aged 15 and older who are participating in the labour market. In other words, they're economically active. They either have a job or actively looking for work. And you can see there's quite a big variation where UK figures is 62%. Uh, uh, don't forget, we've got about eight and a half million people in the UK of working age who are not active in the labour market. It's significantly higher, of course, in countries like uh, Qatar, you know, UAE and Kuwait, uh, and quite high in places like Singapore, New Zealand. But notice how much lower labour force participation is in countries such as Greece and Italy. Uh, surely a combination of economic and social cultural factors at work, but significantly low. 
and uh, one of the aims of Japan is to get their labour force participation rate up, in particular to get more women into work. That's really quite important. Okay, uh, population growth we've talked about, uh, participation rate we've talked about. One of the features of population, of course, is the median age. Median age is the middle, so you divide the population into two numerically equal groups. Half the people are younger than this age, half are older. Median is the middle value in the distribution. And you can see that the UK's median age is now nudged over 40. That's uh, quite a bit higher than the United States, for example. Uh, higher than China, a lot higher than Brazil. And of course, India has a much, much lower median age. But look at Japan and Germany. They, their median age is six years, more than six years higher than the UK. So the ageing population economics is certainly pertinent to many developed countries, but particularly to those two. Will an ageing population in theory, in practice, be a barrier to aggregate supply potential in the years ahead? And we can see finally uh, the population pyramid. This is often shown for countries. This shows two years, actually 2004, which is the outline pyramid, and 2014, the shaded pyramid. A couple of things that are worth noting, the significant increase in the number of males aged over 85, that's risen by more than 60% since 2004. And if you look at the age range, sort of 20 to 45, again, there's been quite a significant change there. In particular, the, uh, the, you can start to see the impact of, of inward migration of younger workers coming in, particularly in the sort of 20s, late 20s. Uh, with males and with females. So the population pyramid in the UK is changing shape as we speak. So population growth is a key factor affecting aggregate supply. Uh, it's not just the quantity of labour, it's the quality. And we'll be talking about productivity in a separate topic video. But hopefully this has given you some background to the change, the natural change and the migration effects on the UK population. Thank you.